Hello friends, we are so glad to be joining with you uh, in your homes today. From our family to yours, we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas, however you're celebrating today and with whomever you're celebrating today. We want to take a moment to really honor this Christmas season, Jesus, and the importance of being together. And whether we realize the significance or not, Christ is in everything. Even in our historical timeline, BC and AD, Jesus' birth is at the center of everything. Christmas is woven into the very fabric of all that we do, and yet we forget God is with us. We miss it. It's like we're really into the celebration, but have no idea how truly big the party invitation really is. And when you get this invitation, Jesus makes himself real to you. It's, this makes this holiday go from holiday to holy day. It, it, it changes everything. Absolutely. So we wanted to tell a few stories about Christmas. Uh, mine's a little bit more on the thoughtful, deep side. I was driving down the 405 freeway. I was listening to, it's an old radio show, I know, but it was back in the day. It was uh, James Dobson listening to Focus on the Family. But the point was that he was talking about Christmas and he was talking about family. And I was just driving along and I was like, oh, I love this and I'm just into it. And I'm down the road quite some time when I realized that James Dobson was talking about two words that I hated when I was growing up. Two words that were always triggers. They were, they were hard on me. I did not like either one of them. The first one was family and the second one was Christmas because both those words came from really bad experiences when I was a kid. And it's just being raised in an alcoholic's home and, and this chaotic environment. And uh, my dad was drunk at all the holidays and all the things were going on. But Christmas became like the one that was the worst because my mom, my single mom, had to bear the burden for the whole family. And my dad actually came in on Christmas Day drunk that day and it was just the worst. They fought, it, they were yelling, and it just destroyed Christmas in my life as a kid. So here I am driving on the freeway and I'm listening to James Dobson and I realized something. I realized that when Christ redeemed me, when he changed my life, I never understood. He actually changed the nouns and the words that I hear. So for me to just go along and hear family and Christmas and realize that God had exchanged all those bad memories for now all the good ones that I could experience in my own life and my own family it was the most powerful thing that day I thought wait a second I had no idea Jesus can transform the words and the memories of our past and make them brand new so that's my story I told you it's a little bit more serious <laughs> But there are other stories we have. I mean, I heard about one that was pretty interesting. Yeah. <laughs> CJ? Well, that's to say the least. Yeah. I do have a pretty crazy Christmas story. So, Mom, forgive me because I'm going to put you on a blast right now. <laughs> I was probably about 12 years old, and we were late getting a Christmas tree this year, so very close to Christmas Day, we're putting up the Christmas tree, all the decorations, and so in a rush, she decides to plug the lights in, not knowing one of the bulbs is broken. And in doing this, and in hanging up the Christmas lights, touches her underneath her skin, <laughs> and full on shocked. I mean oh. like the shake and everything, full on shocked. Almost knocked the Christmas tree over and it was panic. No one, this is the bad part, <laughs> no one went to help. No. Everyone just laughed. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was pretty funny, but. <laughs> oh my. I'm sure she laughs about oh, it now. Oh yeah, now it is, yeah, now it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Not at the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have one that also involves the Christmas tree. It's actually a little more recent though. So uh, my husband Jacob grew up with a real tree um, I grew up with an artificial tree, and so when we first got married, um, we decided, hey, we'll go ahead and do a real tree. That's fine. It's some, I, I have no experience in getting what a real tree, all the bells and whistles that come with a real tree. So the very first year we do it, we go to Home Depot, and they actually tie it on the roof for you. They're excellent. Like, everything's already done for you. Well, the following year, we have the twins. They're still babies. They're in months old at this time, and we're like, oh, we, maybe we can find it cheaper at Walmart. 
So we go to Walmart, <clears throat> expecting the same sort of treatment. They're going to tie it on the roof for you. They don't. And <laughs> so we go to Walmart. We, cho we, we choose the tree. We have no rope. And we're like, how are we supposed to get this tree home? So we put it inside, <laughs> inside the car um, with the twins in the back seat, and we don't do real trees anymore. <laughs> so, um, we, we do artificial now. It was a blessing with it. But that was something that just kind of stuck out to us. The year we uh, drove home with the tree inside our car and all the people watching us, like, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> like, so uh, it's just something that stuck with us. Yeah. That is a, that is a great story. So Ben, why don't you get? Why don't you open up, read the scriptures for us and with us for this this day? Yeah. Today I'm reading out of the book of John. This is chapter one, verses nine through fourteen. It says, "The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and to his own people." and they did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as the only son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Mm. Yeah. Good. Okay, now just for fun, how about reading from Eugene Peterson's The Message? Very different take on the same scripture. It's very different. So this is <laughs> same scripture, John 1, The Message. The life, light was the real thing. Every person entering life, he brings into light. He was in the world, and the world was there through him, and yet the world didn't even notice. He came to his own people, but they didn't want him. But whoever did want him, who believed he was who he claimed and would do what he said, he made to be their true selves, their child of God selves. These are the God begotten, not blood begotten, not flesh begotten, not sex begotten. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like father, like son, Generous inside and out, true from start to finish. Mm, man, so take take a moment, and you've got a couple translations. Just think about what word, what words, or thought comes out of those scriptures when you hear Ben reading those uh, different translations, but from the same passage. What do you What do you hear? What are you thinking? I think it was the very first one. It's the real deal. Mm. Jesus is the real deal, and truly um, an encounter. And that's kind of what our, that is what our theme is this year, is to have an encounter with Jesus. He's yeah. the real deal. That's good. Anybody else? I, I would say, for me, the part of just, we're all grafted in as children of his, um, and how important that is for all of us to be able to call him our father, and he picks up those who are, who are fatherless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. All right. Anybody else? I don't want to no. cut it short. Thoughts? He was here. He's always been here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. He's yeah. always been around. Yeah. And, and he he was aware of us before we were aware of him. Mm -hmm. I think that's a beautiful thing. Is that we we didn't know, but he already knew us. Yeah. I think that's a wonderful part of that. That's powerful. Yeah. I talked about it a couple weeks ago, but uh, when you read the 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 word is translated word, but it was, uh, it was the most popular word uh, around for philosophers back in the first century. And so when John wrote that, he kind of blew everybody away because he said, the logos. And when he used that, I am sure that the, the Jewish people were like, whoa, what is going on? Because this is a Greek word. But if you realize, he also said, you know, in the beginning, John 1.1 1, 1 says in the beginning. But I love the fact that John took this Jewish long, deep heritage and he also blended it with the with the Greeks or the Gentiles, which is us, using this word logos. But we are we're going to go into a time of worship, and we want you to join with us as uh, CJ and Brittany kind of lead us in a song. Jesus be the center of our life.
is at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing Jesus, you're the center, and everything revolves around you, Jesus, you, Jesus, be the center of my life, Jesus, be the center of my It's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Jesus, you're center of your church. Jesus, be the center of your church. And every knee will bow, and every tongue shall confess you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing else the center of it all. Hey, Merry Christmas. What a joy to be with you in your house on this holy day. I get to bring the Christmas story to you. My name is Robin, and I'm going to do that with the help of one of my friends. And I brought a friend with me. Let me get him right here. Hello. Hello. This is my friend Georgie. How's it going, girl? It's going pretty good. And Merry Christmas to you. And Merry Christmas to you. The merriest of Christmases to you. Georgie, let's just enjoy 
telling the story of the very first Christmas. Is this the one with the baby? This is the one with the baby, the baby. Now, there was uh, another family that had a baby right before the Christmas baby, which we'll talk about. But this was Mary, Mary's cousin, Elizabeth, or, or, or aunt, and she and her husband, Zacharias, had been visited by an angel. And he was pretty surprised. He was pretty surprised. I love this part of the story because God's people have been waiting 400 years to hear God talk. My goodness, that's a long time to wait. It's a long time to wait. I don't like to wait at all. I don't like to wait usually at all either. The people were waiting in the day that Zacharias went into the temple and he'd seen the angel and the angel gave them a word from the Lord. Well, Zacharias didn't believe it right away and he said these words. What did he say? How do I know this is true? Now, you guys were allowed to ask questions, but that particular day, the angel of the Lord said, you know what, it's going to happen. He said, my name's Gabriel. I stand before the Lord God Almighty. These things that have been said are going to come true, but you're not going to talk about it for a while because Zacharias went into a timeout. Well, you don't need a timeout. It means he could not talk at all. And when the people who were waiting out in the courtyard were waiting for Zacharias to come out of the temple, and he did, and he did, they said, Zacharias, are you okay? And he said, no. Zacharias, you look like you've heard from God. You have? Zacharias, we've been waiting 400 years to hear from God. What did he, are you, did he talk? God has spoken, everyone. Gather around. What did he say? What did he say? Talk about leaving you hanging, but you know what? Everything the angel delivered that day, the news that he had told Zacharias came true. He and his wife, Elizabeth, would have a baby. Baby Jesus. No, not baby Jesus. Baby John. They would name their baby John, and John would be on a mission when he was an adult to get everybody ready for the Savior of the world. What's the Savior of the world? You know, the Messiah. What's a Messiah? Um, the rescuer. What? Redeemer? I don't know these words. The superhero. Oh, the superhero, the one who will come and bring a new kingdom. And not just the kind where people sit on thrones, but the one that's established in the hearts of women and men and girls and boys inside of us. This is what we're all waiting for, to be back in the garden with God. The garden, yeah, the garden of Eden, the way God planned it from the very beginning, that we have this perfect relationship with him, with nothing getting in between the way of us and God. Like being embarrassed, oh. like shame, oh. like sin, like sin. We need help, oh baby, do we need help. And this is why Jesus came. So that same angel that had appeared to Zacharias, he went over into the next town, well, quite a few towns, in the little town of Galilee, and he appeared to a, little, a young woman named Mary. Hey, Mary, you're highly favored of God. Highly favored? Wow! And God has a job for you, a mission. You're going to have a baby, and this baby will be the Son of God. He will come and turn our hearts to God. And you know what? When Mary heard this news, she had a question too. Don't do it, Mary. Don't say anything. You might get needy and time out. Well, she asked her question. Can I just tell you, God doesn't mind our questions. We can ask questions. It's totally fine. Well, so Mary asked a question. What did she say? She said, how can this be? I'm not even married. Mary knows how it works. It's a mama and a daddy. It's a mom and a dad, not just one. And so she said, I'm not even married. How can this be? And the angel said, good question, girl. Good question. Because this thing that's happening in you is not from any human being. It's from God himself. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the baby will be the son of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow was right. And so Mary opened her mouth again. What did she say this time? She said, I'm your girl. May it be to me just like you say. Y E Y S. What? Yeah, I know how to spell it. It's yes. Yes. What a great answer for all of us to say to God. Yes, whatever it is you say, Lord, I trust you. It wasn't going to be easy. But Mary, 
She said, yes. I know, it's probably because God picked the right person, right? I think he did for sure. Well, news got around, and she had to let it come out, let people know that she was going to have a baby. You can't hide that kind of thing forever. No, you can't. And pretty soon, her fiancé, he found out too. But here's the sweet part. God sent an angel to Joseph too and told him so he would hear it straight from God. This baby is, is, is the son of God. And Joseph said, I'll do it. I'll do it. He'll be the great foster dad. He will take care of that little baby and take care of that baby's mama. That's awesome. And so it came about that it was time for everyone to return to their hometowns where their, their fathers and their grandfathers were from in order to pay taxes. And so Joseph, he's going to go back to his home, home, hometown of Bethlehem. And his young, almost wife, but not quite, still fiance, she said, I want to go too. And so he brought her with him. And she is now great with child. Whoa, going to ride a donkey. Probably so. And they went and made the journey from Galilee all the way to Bethlehem. And when they got there, oh no. Oh no what? Oh no what? There's no room. It's crowded? So crowded. What are we going to do? I know. Joseph is, you know, this is his one job, you know, take care of Mary. And now it looks like he's blowing it. There's no place for them to rest and spend the night. And to make matters more urgent. More urgent? What does it mean? It's time. It's time! It's time! For the baby? For the baby. Oh no! And so Joseph worked hard trying to find an inn in some kind of room. And all he could find was a stable. A barn! To go sleep out in the barn. And so he made a bed for Mary. Lay down, okay? I'm not Mary, I'm a monkey. I know you are. But I'm showing you I like to go night night. Okay, well don't go night night. But Mary did lay down. And there she is out there in the barn. Well, who, what do you need when you are having a baby? I think you need a doctor. I know, that's what I would like. What else? How about some nurses, for sure. Maybe some clean sheets, right? Uh, stat, stat, clean sheets now. You need all these things, but you know what? Mary, Mary had hay. She did, and she had cows. Moo. She had goats. <laughs> she had all these animals around her and there on that early Christmas morning while the stars were twinkling still before the sun came up Mary delivered the Son of God <sighs> and at that point God the Father could, couldn't keep quiet about it any longer he sent a whole troop of angels that filled the nighttime sky out in the hill country where the shepherds were just sheep in the middle of the night making sure no lion mountain lions got a hold of them then what happened well then and then they looked up in the sky and all of a sudden it was filled with angels and the angel said glory to god get up and go get up and go guys go and see this thing the lord has done because right over there in the city of bethlehem a savior here who has been born to you this night christ the lord get up and go so I get up and go, they got up and went, and they went to Bethlehem, and they looked and looked until they found, and this will be a sign unto you, you will find that baby in the hospital. No, you will find that baby in a beautiful crib. No, you will find the baby in a bouncy bassinet. No, you will find the baby wrapped up in cloths and lying in a trough where the cows eat their hay lying in the manger. Did they find the baby? Did they? They did. They found him, and this is the best part. These shepherds, these shepherds who probably had never gone to school their whole life, they probably didn't even know how to read. I don't think so. But God gave the news to them, and when they laid their eyes on that baby, and when they realized they had seen angels and they had heard that news and it went from their head into their heart that God was touching earth and they were eyewitnesses to the whole thing. They worshiped. They worshiped? They worshiped Jesus. Can I tell you what you can do for Christmas? What you can do? 
for every day of your life, it's always the best choice, is you worship him. Because Jesus is God's son. And he came here to do a big job. And he did it very, very well. He showed us what God is like. Oh, come let us adore him. That's it. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Merry Christmas, everyone. Would you help us pray tonight today? Let's pray one time before we're done. I, I mean, may I bless you? Would you would you maybe put your hands out like you're gonna get a Christmas present? Put your hands out like this, and I'm gonna pray for you right now. May God show you right there in your own neighborhood, in your own home, in your everyday ordinary life, that He is showing up for you, that He is real, that He is God with us. Amen. Amen.